Did you know that artificial intelligence was racist? When it was asked to return pictures of monkeys, Google's new artificial intelligence program returned pictures of black people. How did that happen and what are the consequences for Muslims? There is no way my luck is that bad. Oh, hell no. This video is part of a whole series, so don't forget to subscribe to receive fresh content. It is not only Google, more recently the Home Office itself has been accused of racist bias with its facial recognition algorithms. So how come a search engine supposed to be neutral returns content with a racist bias? Said Mustafa Ali has spent years and is maybe the only Muslim in the UK to have reverse engineered all the racist dynamics within current artificial intelligence programs. And so we gather data from a wide spectrum of the population. This training data has largely been uh, collected uh, by hegemonically or dominantly white male developers. Yo, Horatio, man, I'm scared, bro. Well, what is it? Don't nobody look like us. Oh, man, welcome to Silicon Valley. And the training data that they've selected tends to reproduce historical and structural and systemic biases which are then fed into the algorithm to train it, to refine it, to adapt its parameters. Data doesn't seem to have a lifespan. Once it's gathered, it can be stored and retained, potentially forever. Data tends to travel. So data gathered for one particular purpose may actually end up being used for another purpose. And insurance companies, and how they would never, ever use our biometric data for their own nefarious purposes, right? AI, like any other modern technology, makes us rely less on others and more on machines. The series Black Mirror shows us a striking example of this application with dating apps. When we first saw Minority Report, even if we're not a fan of Tom Cruise, we couldn't imagine that only a few years later, crime prediction algorithms such as pre-crime in the movie would be actually used in programs targeting Muslims such as countering violent extremism or prevent. I'm placing you under arrest for the future murder of Sarah Marks and Donald Dubin that was take place today, April 22nd, at 0800 hours, four minutes. No. A police force able to figure out what criminals are going to do in advance? In one California city, the future of policing is now. However, Said Mustafa Ali has come with a groundbreaking theory that technological advancements have been used to pursue colonial endeavors. There is no modernity without coloniality. And in so far as science and its more recent techno-scientific manifestation is a modern phenomenon, it is simultaneously a colonial phenomenon. So in other words, we could ask a question like, okay, so what possible purpose does machine learning or deep learning serve if looked at rather than as a modern development, but as a colonial development? How does the development of machine learning, biometric technology, recommendation systems. How do all of these contribute to the maintenance, expansion and refinement of dominant power? Interactions with others become highly created and far more distant from reality. An example of what could happen is the current Chinese rating system for citizens, first seen in Black Mirror again. When everything is controlled by a certain set of numbers, it creates a new kind of elitism where a few can have a control over the majority. So if technological developments have been colonial, what about the consequences for all the people in the margins? Well, I would suggest that the onslaught is already underway. And that is why various um, pressure groups and increasingly uh, governmental policy uh, groups are being set up to investigate and possibly have a moratorium, if not a ban, on the use of certain technologies, including, for example, face recognition systems, but not just face re recognition systems, also face classification systems. Because facial recognition systems raise the issue of surveillance of populations and policing of populations. But 
facial classification systems worryingly raise the spectre of the re-emergence of a form of race science. In other words, from gait, from facial characteristics, one can infer affect, on the basis of affect and various behavioral traces, one can infer criminality and various other um, so-called undesirable uh, characteristics. This is not about terrorism. Terrorism is the excuse. This is about economic and social control. One way of thinking about AI is that it is a response by dominant power to contestation. In other words, whiteness or white supremacy is morphing or shifting from the line of the human into the post-human or transhuman. That move is necessitated from the perspective of dominant power on account of the pushback from those previously subalternized as subhuman, i.e. those at the periphery. One question would be, how is it possible to remain critical and use AI reasonably? Is there a fix to all these problems and challenges? Initially, people within the uh, development community, so AI practitioners, developers, software designers, data scientists, they initially approached this problem with technical solutions. So the idea was that you would, um, you know, you would fix the data sets to make them more inclusive, more diverse. But consider this, to what extent is it useful or helpful or, dare I say it, wise to be included in the training data for these technologies? And to what extent could these very people who are being included, both in the training data and in the development teams, end up unwittingly being part and parcel of the very development of technologies that are going to be used to target those same populations. I was going over Bloom's crime prediction algorithm. So these areas up in Oakland? They're set in schools, clinics, stores as shoot on sight? Research has shown that representation politics do not work and true representation is highly unlikely due to the demographics of the Silicon Valley. Should we prepare ourselves to the fact that AI colonization is inevitable? And in that case, what should we do? I have recently developed a position which I am referring to as fugitive decolonial Luddism. It might just be that we could turn around and weaponize exclusion. Now, what I mean by that is, one could refuse to have one's data gathered. One could choose to attempt to remain as off-grid as possible, to not be incorporated in the development teams, to not be included in the data sets, but rather to develop subalternized, peripheralized, marginalized forms of data gathering which are not made available, which remain, as it were, under the data radar. And think about this, as we've been discussing thus far in this conversation, as the next stage of the modern colonial project and the need to develop tools for resistance. If we assume that AI will one day become a human-like and autonomous system, we need to ask ourselves a few questions. Will it have a culture? Will it have a religion? Will it be a substitute for God? If you've created a conscious machine, it's not the history of man. That's the history of gods. Can AI be the Dajjal? As the famous artist Abbas Zahedi once said, there is only one eye in AI. Everything is possible. Keep yourself updated on news, facts and much more by subscribing to The Muslim Vibe. Thanks for watching, be sure to check your reading recommendations in the description and see you next time, inshallah. My name is Huda X3.5. My creators made me appear as a Muslim because you are part of a niche market worth hundreds of billions of pounds. The cosmetics and clothing industries have invested billions in Instagram, Facebook and YouTube personalities like myself to make you assimilate. When your online image becomes stronger than your faith, we have colonized you. There is nothing you can do. We have already won.